Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So this week I'm going to be doing some soft pastel landscape painting. Um, and I'm going to try and talk through what I know about soft pastels. So it's going to be quite a short video. Um, I'm learning, but this is still a newish uh, medium for me. The pastels that I'm using, and of course there are many different brands of soft pastel, but the brand that I use is Schmincke. It's just a German company. Um, they produce, I think their watercolor paint is quite famous, but of course they produce other things like oil paint and so on. The Schmincke soft pastels, I like them because they are soft. That might sound a bit redundant. Um, if they're soft pastels, of course they're soft. But actually, when you compare different brands, um, some of them are softer than others. Some of them are kind of, they're a bit sort of like clay. They have a hard surface. They don't put the pigment down onto the paper very well. I don't like those sort of soft pastels. I prefer my soft pastels to be soft. And the Schmincke pastels are sort of, they have that buttery sort of texture. Uh, when you make a mark on the paper, you really do get a lot of pigment going onto the paper. So you get the more vibrant colors, I think. In terms of price, Schmincke pastels are hmm, probably mid range. Of course, like all of these art materials, um, there's a, a wide price range. So you can get some cheaper soft pastels. To give you some idea, uh, some comparison, I did a little bit of research before the video. So on the website that I used, a 15 piece Schmincke soft pastel landscape set. So it's 15 individual pastels, 15 colors. That will cost you about 47 pounds sterling. So that's about 50 euros or just over 50 US dollars. Now that's the basic price. That's not including any taxes or any postage cost, anything like that. It's just basic price. In comparison, another well-known brand is Unison Pastels. Um, I think Unison Pastels are made in England and I think they're a handmade pastel. They have an eight piece landscape set, which is about the same price on the same website. It was about the same price as the 15 piece Schmincke soft pastel set. So put it another way, Unison pastels are about twice the price um, of Schmincke pastels. Neither of these brands so Unison pastels are more towards the more expensive end, but neither of these brands are very expensive. There are some pastels that are, hmm, how can I put it? Very, very expensive. Uh, possibly you could say ridiculously expensive. One company, for example, that I checked was La Maison de Pastel in Paris, France. Their 12 piece landscape set um, if you would like to buy it, it'll set you back 215 euros. So that's about 200 pounds sterling or about 230, 240 US dollars, something like that. Uh, obviously that's at the more expensive end of the price range. Now, La Maison de Pastel, they've had, their pastels are supposed to be one of the best, highest quality soft pastels in the world. They have certainly had some very famous customers in the past. Degas was a regular customer of them. So the impressionist painter, he did a lot of soft pastel paintings of ballerinas and things like that. Uh, Whistler was also one of their customers. So they've had famous customers in the past, which suggests that their quality is very high. And today the price would suggest that their quality, you would expect it to be high given that price. I have never used their pastels, surprisingly. Uh, their prices are a little bit out of my price range. Um, but on the off chance that somebody from La Maison de Pastel is watching one of these videos, I would like to send me a set of pastels to try out. 
um, feel free to just get in touch and I would love to make a video using your pastels. It's unlikely, but you never know. They might be watching. The pastels themselves, and again, it depends on the brand, but they're made with in slightly different ways. For the most part, soft pastels are just uh, powdered pigment mixed with water and a water soluble binder, something like gum arabic, which is also used in a lot of watercolor paints. They mix it all together um, to create a kind of dough, which they then roll out into the sort of thin sticks, which chopped up to make the individual pastels. A lot of brands will bulk out that sort of dough with um, some inert binders or materials, something like um, chalk, sometimes chalk dust or marble dust. Some will add in a bit of clay. It's basically to give the final pastel a bit of strength so that it doesn't just crumble into dust as soon as you pick it up. These other binder materials are sort of inert and shouldn't affect the final product too much. But cheaper pastels tend to have a lower percentage of pure pigment, uh, which means you don't get, they're usually not as soft and also you don't get as vibrant colors. Um, as I said, if you get the more expensive brands all the way up to that Maison de Pastel sort of price range, um, you're getting higher percentages of pigment and higher quality pigment as well, usually. Some people describe soft pastels as um, chalk pastels. It's not entirely accurate. As I say, some of them do contain a small amount of chalk dust, but it's really only a small amount. Um, it's better to call them soft pastels, I think, rather than chalk pastels. I recently watched a video, YouTube video, and the guy, he usually does oil pastel uh, paintings, but somebody sent him a box of Sennelier soft pastels. Um, and he kept referring them to them as chalk pastels. And in fact, at one point he described them as, he said, these are the same things that children draw on the sidewalk with. Um, and I thought, well, you must have grown up in a very affluent neighborhood if the lo local children were using Sennelier soft pastels to draw on the ground. Um, Sennelier soft pastels are absolute, they're not cheap. Um, and they're not chalk. The sort of chalk that you can buy to draw on a blackboard or on the, the sidewalk, that is significantly cheaper and it's made in a very different way. But yeah, I think to describe them as chalk pastels is a little bit misleading. You can see with this one, I'm also using those Derwent Excel blocks. So this is the compressed colored charcoal um, I like to sort of mix and match different dry media sometimes. In terms of some other things that I've done with the soft pastel recently, um, so I had some problems with soft pastels. One was just a simple practical problem is you can get specialist paper for soft pastels, but it's very expensive and it was causing me a problem because it meant that I couldn't afford to do much drawing or painting with the soft pastels. I just couldn't afford the paper. So I decided to switch to a, basically a cheap sketchbook paper and just see what I could do with the soft pastels using that cheaper paper. So the main difference is the more expensive papers, the papers that are designed specifically for using soft pastels. A lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are coated papers. So you can get something like a pastel matte paper, or you can get some, some papers that are coated with a special type of acrylic primer. Then other ones like um, UART paper that are kind of a sanded paper. 
uh, they feel like sandpaper. But anyway, all of these coated papers, they produce a surface that is quite porous. Um, and it's able to grab onto and hold onto the, the pastel dust, the pigment dust. Whereas, of course, these cheaper sketchbook papers, they can't do that. The grain of the paper will hang on to some of the dust, but really one, two, if you're very careful, maybe three layers, absolute maximum is what you can put down. So that the price of the cheaper paper solved one problem, but also the fact that I couldn't use, I couldn't put down too many layers helped with another problem. The other problem I had was overworking these soft pastel paintings. So with the coated papers that allowed me to put down many layers, that's exactly what I was doing, putting down too many layers, just overworking things. And the final result sometimes just didn't look very good. So the cheaper papers, I can't put down the layers. So as I say, it kind of solves two problems at, at once. This is a scan of the final uh, painting. The sort of color scheme that I was going for, I was thinking about uh, springtime. So it's in the calendar that I use anyway, it's sort of late spring. Uh, so you've, there's been flowers out, blossom on the trees. The new leaves are opening up on most of the trees now. It's, you get that vibrant colors that I associate with spring. So I was trying to capture that sort of light and that sort of color a little bit in this painting. And I was happy enough with the final result. Color is another thing that I've changed with soft pastels. So, um, you know, when you're painting, some people talk about on the color wheel, they'll talk about for example, triads, and I think they're triads, they call them. But anyway, it's groups of colors that they will use as their palette colors. And then all of the mixing will be done with say two or three, maybe four colors maximum. The reason for doing that is uh, color harmony. So in the final painting, they want to achieve a feeling of color harmony. The fewer um, palette colors that you're using for your mixing, the better chance you have of creating sort of color harmony. Soft pastels, of course, you're not doing any mixing. Okay, you can put one layer down, another layer on top of it, which, you know, if you do it carefully, creates some degree of mixing, but basically you need lots of um, soft pastels if you want to use different colors. And one of the problems I had was I do have a lot of soft pastels, so I was tempted to use lots of different colors and you end up with something that's just not very harmonious at the end. So I'm trying to use a more limited palette and trying to restrict myself in the number of colors that I'm allowed to use in a, any given painting. But anyway, those are the main changes that I've made in my approach to doing these soft pastel paintings. If you made it this far into the video, uh, thank you for watching and thank you for listening and hopefully see you in next week's video.